Let's travel to the past. Hello. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome. And did I mention welcome? So, it's been a little while, but I wanted to talk about something that I struggle to find an answer to. Um, I went through a pretty big journey of questioning, am I actually an ENFP? Is it possible that I'm an INFJ? Is it possible that I'm an INFP? I definitely thought I was an introvert for a very long time. And something that helped me realize who I really was was looking further back in my past. So we all develop and we all change and our circumstances make us react in different ways. And so though, I am an ENFP and I've always been an ENFP. I've questioned it because I haven't always acted like an ENFP, especially um, come around 16 to 23. Somewhere in that range, I started really questioning it. Um, is this really who I am? Is that even possible? But let me, let me bring it back in time and let's travel to the past. And by travel to the past, I mean particularly my past and what it was like to be an ENFP as a child and how that information helped me understand that I am indeed an ENFP and there's no question about it. So let's start with young, young little old me. This is where it gets a little confusing because little old me, I didn't talk to anyone until I was at least three years old. My mom had taken me to see the speech therapist. She had had my intelligence questioned. She did all these things. She thought something was wrong with me. She's like, why isn't my child speaking? Um, I was the only one in the family who waited so long. I did not speak besides maybe a few things when I was a young, young baby, like year and a half. And when I did start speaking, I was speaking in full, complete sentences. Uh, I think I think part of why that was is because I wanted to make sure that I was getting my point across. I wanted to observe and soak in the world around me and I wanted to be the best. I wanted to be great and it started at such a young age um, and continued throughout the rest of my life um, wanting to be the best at everything including speaking. Um, so. As I got older, I was talking more and more and more and I wanted to talk to everybody and I didn't want to just talk to people. I wanted to get to know people and their histories and what made them the way they were. And I'm talking a five year old talking to a 70 year old lady asking her about her past and where she comes from. Um, I was always trying to see how things fit together, put it in this bigger perspective, and I always like to talk to older people more so than people my own age. Uh, when it came to people my own age, I was always very confused why I didn't fit in more. Um, it's possible that I, you know, am on the autism scale. It's very possible. Either that or I was highly sensitive and or both. Um, but I never quite understood, and this, this is what leads me to believe I have very low FE. I never understood why people didn't want to be around me and why people thought I was weird. I was always wanting to play these extravagant games with all these crazy backstories. <sighs> yeah, um, I can see why, why people, people might not have wanted to be be that close to me. I was also a little bit obsessive with the people that I was friends with. Uh, I had to know everything about them. I was always looking for what we had in common. Um, always trying to find some kind of meaning in the things that happen. For example, there's this one memory and I'll never forget. So I believe it was second grade. Uh, my teacher had set up this game where we had to find a coin that had our initials on it. So at the time I was still going by Heather and so my initials were HW. There was a girl in my class, another girl who I'd never really talked to. Her initials were MH. We're out finding our coins and our coins look exactly the same. There's no line to delineate it and me 
being the perfectionist that I was, I had to get to the bottom of it. Which coin went to which person? I had to make sure that we had the right coins. It's a chocolate coin, like who cares? They have our initials on it, who cares? But anyway, I went through this whole investigation. We're looking at the coins, flipping them upside down, and we're like, okay, this kind of looks like it's probably an M, not a W, and this is probably blah, 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 blah. We even ended up bringing it to our teacher, and I'm pretty sure, now I could be, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure looking back that my teacher randomly picked which one was the HW and which one was the MH. However, after that moment, me and this girl were inseparable. Unfortunately, she was really into sports and her parents had her doing all kinds of extracurricular activities, so we didn't really hang out that much, but when we did, um, we really liked to play uh, Pokemon. And I don't mean the card game. I mean, we imagined the Pokemon were real with us and we're, <laughs> we were taking care of them and we were eating our poke food, which we had for some reason assigned pretzel sticks, you know, like the, the sticks that are like that long and like that thick, we assigned those as the official Pokemon food. <laughs> Elsewise, I pretty much mostly stuck to having males as friends. Females, I never fully understood. There was always this like level of competition between females. There's always this, I'm better than you are, or you're not exactly what fits in. And I'm thinking now that the reason that I didn't fit in is because of that Effie. And, and, and this is kind of what brought me to realize that I'm not an INFJ. Um, the Fe never made sense to me. I never figured out my place in this kind of social structure. And it it always confused me. I'm like, why can't we just be friends? Like, who cares? Like, why does that matter? And like, we're all the same. We're all people. We have so much in common. Why are, why are we seg segregating ourselves like this? Um, I was the kind of person that would go to the guy from Turkey. Uh, we had two twins, obviously twins, um, in our school that had moved to America from Turkey. So they hardly spoke any English and I wanted to be friends with them and I tried to be friends with them and there were people telling making fun of them all the time of course because they didn't speak English um, and that of course made them make fun of me you know how it goes um, but I was always kind of looking out for the underdog and even though I was also an underdog myself haha <laughs> and um, I always seemed to attract the underdogs whether I meant to or not I think part of it is because I always try to understand people and where they came from and I'm talking even five six seven year old me was trying to understand people and where they come from and I think that draws a certain type of people to you the other misunderstood people because finally they find somebody who wants to actually get to know them and doesn't want to pigeonhole them into some kind of area um, like there's this one girl, she had a big mole on her arm. And I'm talking big, I'm talking like this big. It covered like almost, like it almost went down to her elbow. I feel like it was on, it was either right above or right below her elbow, but it was huge. People thought she was contagious. People thought that was ugly. They didn't want to talk to her. And so we ended up becoming friends. Not really close friends um, because I didn't want to be too close with her because I knew that the after effect would be people would make fun of me. So I kept a healthy distance, but I did also try to really be friends with her. Um, looking back, that kind of sounds selfish and conceited, but when you're six or seven, you don't really know better. You really don't. On top of like that in my school life, being friends mostly with guys because girls didn't make sense to me, um, I also spent a lot of time outside of my house. I didn't really like being home, I didn't like being outside, it was boring, it was limited, um, so I would always go out, I would go on adventures. My favorite thing to do was to go to this little wooded area by my house, and I'm talking little, it's probably eight trees and some bushes, 
But that was my favorite, favorite place in the world because there I could be whatever I wanted to be. I could be a fairy, I could be a princess, or I could be a tree folk, I could be an animal. I didn't know, but I could be anything. And I really loved climbing trees and looking around and imagining what everyone's doing in their lives. Um, and this is also kind of what led me to think more that I have that any, that drive to understand what people are doing and to kind of imagine what they're doing um and like kind of in a way it's uh metaphorical that i like to look at things from above and imagine and see the different families and the different people and how it all fit together i also really <laughs> i thought honestly that i could speak to animals like a hundred percent i was a hundred percent convinced i could speak to animals there was like German Shepherd across the street named Lucky. He and I were best friends. There was this cat that roamed around in Orange Tabby. That cat and I were friends. I would always talk to her from like across the street because she never let me get that close. Like I never pet her, <laughs> but I was obsessed with her. I was like friends with even the animals. I tried, <laughs> I tried. I tried to be friends with everyone on my block. Some people I was more successful with than others. Um, and one other thing that I just remembered and kind of also taught me that I am indeed an NE um, is my obsession with figuring out how things worked and how they fit together. Um, one way that that, you know, kind of solidified itself into my real life was my obsession with worms and bugs, specifically worms. Any time that it rained, I would be outside looking for worms, ready to do my experiments on them. <laughs> I had no idea that, you know, I was killing them. Eventually I realized that there was something wrong with um, pulling apart worms to see if they'll grow back together or pushing them to see what their guts look like on the inside. We literally couldn't keep goldfish because I would do the exact same thing. I would squish them because I wanted to see what's on the inside. And let me tell you, all I remember is this one goldfish that we won and I swished it and like little, little clear thingies with black specks on the inside came out of it. And that's like all it seemed to be made of. And I thought it was the most fascinating thing. And I didn't even realize that I was killing the poor thing. I was like, this is so cool. Um, yeah, as I, got older, I realized that I did not like to go by the name Heather. A little backstory to this, I grew up on Heather Drive. Literally Heather freaking Drive. And my name was Heather. Uh, one of my neighbors, her name was Heather, and there was at least two other girls in my school whose names were also Heather. Um, so I knew that I wanted to be Michelle. I always knew that I wanted to go by Michelle, uh, but it's hard to tell your mom that you want to go by a different name than the one they named you. Especially when your mom is like, that's the name that you were in my womb since before you were even born. How could you change that? But I finally had an opportunity. I had a chance to change my name. Nobody knew me. I was going to be myself. Middle of third grade, we moved. It was right after spring break. I was coming into the school and the teacher asked me what was my name. And my heart's racing. I'm ready to say it. I'm about to say Michelle. It's on the tip of my tongue. And my mom swoops in. And she says, this is little Heather, she's just shy. I was like, no, I'm not shy. <laughs> I just don't want to go by Heather. But you know, I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to make my mom upset. Um, so I let myself be called Heather and lo and behold, <laughs> there was a Heather in that very class. I moved from Philadelphia to South Carolina, so I was always making fun of their southern accent before I moved, and I was like, hey y'all, like I'm moving to South Carolina, like I thought it was the funniest thing that ever happened. Um, and when I moved there, it turns out I was the one being made fun of for having a funny accent, because I had a Philadelphian accent and I was living in... Greenville, South Carolina. And Greenville, let me tell you, is Southern Belle galore. I mean, when you think of that sweet, soft Southern Belle accent, you're thinking of a Greenville accent. You're thinking of that Charlotte, Greenville kind of accent. Like they have a very distinctive sound, a slow drawl. Anyway, perfect example of me being an ENFP. Okay, 
Effie blind, right? Okay, so here's how I'm gonna prove it to you, giving this example. I'm in third grade. I've been in this new school a couple, maybe a few weeks. There's this girl, her name is Sydney, um, and she and I had been friends. Like, she was talking to me a lot, she was like questioning me and getting to know me, and I thought she was really cool. She was like, so, are there any boys that you like? And I was like, well, there's this one, and she's like, oh my god, I like him too. And little old me, I was like, oh, that's the coolest thing ever. We like the same person. We have so much in common. <laughs> Literally, those were my thoughts. We have so much in common. That's all I thought about that little that little engagement, right? We get back from, di from lunch that very day. The teacher leaves us in the room alone while she goes to the bathroom. She's gone a few minutes. During that time that she's gone, Sydney gets up in front of the entire class and is like, Heather has a crush on Clay. <laughs> Literally, she kind of said it like that too and just made it so uncomfortable. I blindly thought that we had something in common. I thought she was cool. I thought that it was something to kind of be happy about that we had a crush on the same person. I don't think she felt the same way at all. <laughs> um, and... That is classic EMFP, just completely blind <laughs> to uh, other people being total B-words. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got tested into gifted and I really picked up well on pretty much any subject. I was really obsessed with being the best in school. I wanted to be the best in everything. I think that's just an ENFP thing. I was reading in a forum somewhere that maybe it was a socionics page, but it kind of expressed that the NEFI specifically, more so than the NETI, we have this need to, when we're in a classroom or in any kind of learning setting, we either have to be better than the person who taught us on our first attempt or better than the rest of the class on our first attempt. Um, and I cannot relate more to that everything in school that I have ever done I've always tried to be the best I've tried to be the one that's noticed I'm even like that now still in my work um, I need to get things quickly and get them immediately and if I don't I feel like a failure and I give up hope that I'm ever gonna learn it if I didn't get it immediately I'm never gonna learn it and this brings me to why I have low SE <laughs> Very low SE, in fact, so much so that I hated gym class. Hated, 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 hated gym class. Except for the social aspect. I loved being around people. Loved getting to know people. But I hated the physical exertion part of it. Um, for example, climbing a rope. That should be easy, right? You should be able to climb a rope. I could climb trees. I could swing on the monkey bars like nobody's business, but I could not climb a gosh darn rope. I had no flexibility. I had no ability to run in any kind of long-term amount of time. I'm definitely a sprinter. Any short bursts of energy. Um, yeah, Essie was, was never my thing and it never made sense. I was like, okay, well, I'm just a fat kid. Uh, I'm always gonna be a fat kid. Obviously, like physical exertion and doing things like that is just not in my cards. I'm an intellectual and I have glasses since I was in like second grade, more Essie blindness, <laughs> like in a kind of physical metaphor. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that kind of breaks down in a nutshell how my childhood and my childhood experiences have kind of showed me that I am an ENFP through and through, FE blind till the day I die. No, I actually have gotten better at that. I've taught myself to learn how to read the FE room around me, to see when I'm getting screwed over, but I'm still pretty bad at that by the way. Um, still pretty bad at realizing when people are trying to take advantage of me because I'm just like, oh, we're so excited about this idea. Obviously, you're as blindly excited by this idea as I am. ENFPs out there? No. You might find people who are blindly as excited about an idea as you are, but be skeptical. I know, I know. Your optimist is like, no, if I'm skeptical then I'm not gonna have that same kind of genuine response, that genuine greatness that's gonna come out of it. No, have a little skepticism because let me tell you, 
you will and probably have been taken advantage of by people who act all excited about your ideas and then either steal it from right under you or screw you over in some kind of manner or take advantage of your time and energy such as in a workplace scenario. So I'm just saying, ENFPs out there, and INFPs, and basically anyone, but we're the two weakest at this, probably. Um, be skeptical. It's okay to be skeptical. Just, just be skeptical. It's okay. You'll feel a lot better if you have a slight hesitation before you go into things. I'm not saying be, be nervous. I'm not saying be low self-esteem. I'm saying be skeptical. Think about, you know, the negative side. I know you don't like to, but think about it. Sorry about that tangent. Um, I'm giving advice to myself just as much as I am to you. But anyway, that's the ENFP childhood of moi in a nutshell and kind of a breakdown in how it works out with the different um, cognitive functions and what helped me realize who I am. Um, and later on we'll talk about ideally my development of my FI. Um, as I got older it didn't really come in until high school. Um, so we'll talk about that in another video. And until then, tell me about your ENFP childhood. Is there things that you relate to about what I said? Are there things that you're like, man, that was nothing like me. I didn't like going out alone anywhere. I wanted to be around people all the time. Whatever it is, tell me down in the comments. Break it down. If you're not an ENFP, if you're some other personality type and you're just interested in the ENFP childhood, tell me about your childhood. What similarities and differences do you see? Uh, think about our cognitive functions and how yours and mine align and where they're different and how our childhoods kind of show that. I think that's a really interesting thing to to kind of discuss and to break down so you know maybe we can start recognizing it sooner and helping people develop their weaknesses and their strengths sooner by recognizing their personality younger. Um, alas, uh, if you like this video thumbs up, <coughs> subscribe, I'll put out more videos. Until then, you have a beautiful, fantastic, wonderful day.